What's up guys and welcome back to another tips and tricks video. In this video, I would like to share with you 25 tips and tricks of the plumbing trade that'll make working with copper pipes a lot quicker and a lot easier. So let's jump right into it. Alright, so starting with number one is brushing your fittings. Cleaning fittings could get tiring quite quickly using your standard wire brush. Instead, clip the end of it leaving around an inch to be able to chuck it in a drill. And zoom your way through all those fittings in half the time. Number two is if you're new to soldering and you're afraid it might leak. Here's something that might help you. An easy way to prevent this is to use tinning flux instead of normal flux. Tinning flux contains solder powder in it and it ensures a full coverage of the joint during the soldering process. Lessening your chances of missing a spot. Number 3 is using a scotch bright pad instead of emery cloth. I find that sandpaper or emery cloth slips in the hand and causes unnecessary fatigue. So what I do is I use a scotch bright pad instead. It's grippy on both sides and makes it a lot easier to use than a paperback emery cloth with no grip. Number 4 is running into an unsupported pipe like this that needs soldering. A quick way to make it hold in place is to grab a pair of pliers and lightly crimp the fitting. This will allow you to place it straight without having to install support. Number 5 is a step that a lot of plumbers neglect when doing copper pipes. And that's deburring the inside of the pipe after cutting it. A burr would eventually cause a pinhole in the pipe and lead to other problems. So get a pencil reamer or an inner outer deburring tool like this and get that burr right off. It only takes about 5 seconds and you'll greatly reduce your chances of having a leak in the long run. Number 6 is another cool way to support a pipe while soldering. Get your mighty tape measure and lock the blade in place to use it as a temporary stand. What I like to do is place it a bit higher and tap it down till it's level. And then I solder it. How's that for a hack? Number 7 is a good preventative measure to take when soldering close to a valve of some sort. First of all, make sure the water is shut off and undo the stem portion with the rubber gasket as to not burn it. If you have a ball valve, you don't need to worry about doing this. Only on older gate valves like this one. Number 8 is a common mishaps beginners make when soldering and it's getting solder on the threads. Gauging how much solder to use isn't something we're born with and it takes time to master. So a quick tip here is to solder these on the side when possible. It'll remove the chance of it going in the threads and any excess will drip on the floor. Number 9 is trying to solder with the slightest amount of water inside the pipe. A few ways you can get this done is by first shutting off the water of course and opening a few fixtures in the building to break the vacuum in the pipes. Then you could use the purge on the main shutoff valve to get rid of any water and if that's not enough, crack open the union nuts from the water meter and that should do it. Number 10 is removing these stubborn manufacturer stickers the quick and easy way. Grab your torch and burn it off. It'll leave a sticky residue because of the glue, so just get some flux and wipe it off. Easy as pie. Number 11 is if you're trying to solder a fitting in a vertical position. When soldering vertically, you run the chance of it falling off once you heat it. So here's a cool idea for it not to. Just like before, block off your tape measure's blade and use it to hold the fitting in place. Then you could solder it without any worries of it falling. Number 12 is when soldering in a wall. You must take the necessary precautions to not set anything on fire. A good way to ensure this is to get one of these flame protectors. They're dirt cheap and won't let the flame go through them. The way to use these is to get some thumbtacks to make it hold in place to make sure it doesn't fall. Number 13 is another common mistake we see and it's applying teflon tape on an adapter that is yet to be soldered. If you do this, you'll burn off the teflon you just put on and it'll lose all of its lubricating properties. So always solder the fitting on first. Wait for it to cool and then apply it. You'll get much better results. 
Number 14 is what to do in case you have an out of round or oval copper pipe. This often happens on pipes that exit a concrete slab in new constructions and that have been damaged and deformed. So to make the pipe round again, just get your adjustable wrench and spin it around the oval portion. It'll force it into its original shape and allow you to carry on. Number 15 is a good tip to go by when soldering copper pipes and it's to not use lead solder for potable water lines. Contrary to popular belief, lead solder is still widely used for heating and draining applications. Just make sure you use the right one for the right application by reading the labels on the rolls, or else you'll violate the plumbing code. Number 16 is trying to speed up the process of cooling off a solder joint with a wet rag. Not good. This is the worst thing you could do to a freshly soldered joint. And the best example is if you put an ice cube in room temperature water. This is what happens. It'll crack. The same thing applies to a joint. If you wet it, the difference in temperature will crack the solder and cause a leak. So always let it cool on its own. Number 17 is knowing how much solder to use. It's not a given to anybody to know how much solder to use for each and every joint, especially as a beginner. A good rule of thumb here is to use the pipe size as a reference. So if you're soldering half inch pipe, you only need about half inch of solder to complete the joint and so on. However, if you do use too much, this will happen and cause restriction and give you problems down the line. Number 18 is the famous bread trick. But when do you actually use it? The white bread trick is a real saver when you have the smallest amount of residual water coming out of the pipe you're trying to solder. It'll act as a temporary plug. All you do is insert it as far as you can not to burn it off and solder your joint. The bread will then dissolve in the water and come out any nearby fixture. Just remember to remove any aerators before turning on the water or they'll get clogged up. Number 19 is a copper pipe cleaning tip. It's always quicker and easier to clean the pipe before cutting it for your new branch. If you cut it before cleaning it, it'll want to spin and move all over the place making it that much more complicated to do. Number 20 is another cool way to protect any backing from getting burnt when soldering and it's to use an old license plate. What's nice about this trick is that it's thin enough to bend around objects, yet thick enough to not let any heat pass through it, making for a great flame protector. Number 21 is soldering a vertical threaded fitting without getting any solder on the threads. Get some Teflon tape and wrap the threads 5 or 6 times. If some solder does overflow for some reason, the Teflon will prevent it from sticking on the threads and make for a very easy cleanup. Number 22 is whenever I'm soldering near a wall as such, I either keep a spray bottle or fire extinguisher close by. If I'm using a spray bottle, I usually spray the area around my work. This helps prevent the wall or wood from easily catching on fire and plus, it serves as an extinguisher. Better to be safe than sorry. Number 23 is one of my personal favorites. So let's say you cut a vertical pipe and there's a bit of water left inside as seen here. You want to remove it without taking the chance of dropping anything inside the pipe. So what I do is I grab a spray bottle head and use it to pump out most of the water. What's nice about this trick is that you could use the spray bottle as an extinguisher like mentioned before. Number 24 is a trick to getting paint off of a copper pipe the easy way for repair or modification. You could use sandpaper or a utility knife, but a really easy alternative to get the paint off effortlessly is to use a pipe. The burr inside is super sharp and it has a curve to it which makes it the ideal tool for removing that stubborn paint right off. And number 25 is a trick that you won't use too often but could save you a bad headache. And it's when you have a joint that's really close to a stud. Normally, you'd heat the exterior of the fitting as such, but in this case, the wood is too close. So here's a way to go around it. Instead, 
take your torch and heat the inside of the pipe. You'll be heating it indirectly and you won't risk setting the wood on fire. And as always guys, if you enjoy these trick videos, help support the channel by liking, sharing and subscribing. And until the next one, thanks for watching.